Hello everyone, it's Robonic Zombie. Welcome to Criminal Minds. Uh, so, if this looks familiar, then uh, you guys have probably seen the TV show. Now, I am not sure if this was made by the same people who made the show, um, but as you can see, the entire cast is here. However, this is not the most recent cast. Uh, you guys, are, I believe the show is on season 10 now, but it's a different cast. Um, but yeah, this is a hidden object game and we are solving murders and mysteries through clues and uh, I'm not sure what to expect from this game. <laughs> I really love the show, I really enjoy the show, so let's see what we have here. Okay, let's start from the first with the... This is like a bomb. Oh, they actually have info. Let's see, first case, a dive art. Mysterious paintings of dead women appear as a serial killer terrorizes a small artistic community in downtown Austin. The fact that this hit takes place in Austin, Texas makes so much sense. <laughs> okay, case two. Ah, oh, this one's locked. No spark. Complex and dangerous spark timer that is using an explosive device is stolen from a downtown Seattle hospital. This case will become unlocked once the first case is completed. Makes sense. Okay. So let's go to serial killer artist in Austin, Texas. Whoa. We're on the plane already! Guilty conscience needs to confess. Hmm, that Confucius. Ah, so I do know that throughout the game you will be playing as um, the different agents, so right now I'm Hotchner. Sure, let's go through the tutorial. FBI handbook tag to learn more about the agents in the behavioral analysis unit, the BAU. Okay. Oh, this is neat. This is actual info. Special Agent Aaron Hoshner. Agent Aaron Hoshner is one of the FBI Behavioral Analysis Unit's primary supervisors and leaders. He is a strong profile who is able to gain people's trust and unlock their secrets. So I know you guys who have seen the show already know all this, but for those people who are seeing this for the very first time, they've never heard of Criminal Minds or they've heard of it but never watched it, that's why I'm reading it. <laughs> Let's see, Special Agent David Rossi. Agent David Rossi and Hotchner lead the BAU as they investigate the minds of murderers. While Rossi has some family problems and multiple divorced wives, his true love is catching killers. He is a founding member of the BAU, the fiery personality and an abrasive method of handling unsubs. Special Agent Emily Prentiss Agent Emily Prentiss is an international intellectual. Her mother was an ambassador. She speaks several languages, and she has spent time working with Interpol. She has a softer, more understanding approach with unsubs, but definitely isn't opposed to a little espionage and trickery. I really enjoy- I enjoy all these characters, but I really love how um, she really is like a, um, a puzzle worker when it comes to um, the really complex cases. Special Agent Dr. Spencer Reed Dr. Spencer Reed is a genius. He graduated high school at age 12. He's got an auto autodidactic memory. I probably butchered that word. I think it's didactic. And several advanced degrees. His mother was a paranoid schizophrenic, and that, combined with his accelerated graduation from school, is probably the reason why he can be described as bluntly honest and somewhat socially awkward. Technical analyst Penelope Garcia. Technical analyst Penelope Garcia is a computer wizard who does not who does most of her work for the BAU from her station in Quantico. The other agents call her whenever they need to research information. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with the show, 
Um, quite a few of the characters do a bit of comic relief, but Penelope is definitely the comic relief. But not in a kooky kind of um, like tongue-in-cheek way, in a direct way of like um, she kind of represents the audience um, from the outside looking in because most of the time she's not on site with the Asians. So she's looking in at what they give her and so that's why she's able to um, give a, a, the com give the com a comedic relief for uh, what pretty much what an audience member would be thinking. Special Agent Derek Morgan. Agent Derek Morgan has used his black belt in the past to serve as a Chicago police officer as well as a bomb squad leader. When someone has to lead an on-site tactical operation, Agent Morgan is a good choice. He is also the team specialist on criminal fixations and obsessive behaviors. Yeah, they revealed um, in the episode The Fox that he has a black belt in judo. And Special Agent Jennifer Giroux, also known as JJ, and they say that here. Agent Jennifer Giroux, otherwise known as, well, I'm mixing up my words a lot today, has been in and out of the BAU, working different jobs, but she's an integral part of the team. She has a tragic past, having lost her sister to suicide. JJ is extremely intelligent and competent, and was once promoted, and was once promoted to work at the Pentagon. Yay! <clears throat> Okay. So, what do we have? A ritual murder in Austin, Texas, matching three other murders in Louisiana two years ago. We should use the, the flight to start profiling our unknown subject. Garcia put together the unsub's background file for us. It's on a CD somewhere on the plane. <laughs> There's the CD. Oh, I turned off the special cursor. That's probably why I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it turned into a hand. Oh. As soon as you give me that printout, we can start on the unsub's profile. Okay. Garcia has compiled the similarities between the previous murders with this new one. Let's use it to put together an initial profile for our unsub before we land in Austin. <coughs> so the previous murders in Louisiana and see what connections we can make with this one in Austin. Oh boy! <laughs> it's gonna be tough. Let's see. Okay. Looks like the previous murders in Louisiana are vi like the previous murders in Louisiana are victim and also stabbed then undress and pose as if for a portrait post-mortem. This is neat. Okay. The unknown subject might be affiliated with the arts. Interestingly, all the victims were women and, and each had a small lock of hair cut from their heads. That's not creepy at all. Victims have all been have all been students, and their bodies posed in unflattering positions. There must be a reason they were painted in such a disrespectful way.
Likely we're dealing with a schizo-obsessive type. Our unsub probably sees themselves as an outside observer. There we go. The unsub ritually murdered one woman each day, so we don't have much time. We should first examine the crime scene to see if we can get a better sense of who our victim is, how much time our unsub might have had with her. Okay. We have a profile. So we know the unsub paints female victims in degrading poses. We need to quickly investigate the crime scene to find out why there's they've started back killing. Only one day prevent another murder. Stay focused. Heritage Park. Hello. Hey you, this is a crime scene. Hands in the air. Oh, he's down. What's your task, let's go to Glana to learn about the task you need to perform, okay? Give Rossi handcuffs. Oh, they're on the exercise bike. Good work, Agent Rossi. Way to get the ball rolling. We have our crime scene, our victim. Can you and Agent Morgan handle things here while we head down to the police station with our suspect? Don't worry, Hodge. We'll get a profile on this sicko and bring him to justice. Something interactable. Okay. Sparkles indicate a hidden object scene. Okay. So I am Rossi looking through all this stuff. Ooh, scrambled. I mean, you find the question marks in the scene to unscramble them, okay? Hint shield for help. Okay. The first one is we need to find a paper clip. There's the ruler. Nail. Funnel. Door knocker. Faucet. Tape measure, three envelopes, there's one, there's two, just need one more envelope. There's a paper clip, there's a lighter, Another question mark, and we're looking for a skirt. There's a skirt. Is that a bloody skirt? Looks like this is paper note. Okay, found a third envelope. Torn paper! Okay. So if I find the object before I unscramble it, it automatically scrambles it. There's another one. And... Okay. Go. Now we need to find a fondue set. <coughs> we 
which you guys have probably seen long before I have. There we go. Okay, we found a paper clip, a skirt, and torn papers. When you're not playing as Agent Rossi. As the case progresses, you will take on the role of all members of the FBI's Behavioral Analysis Unit. Just look at the bottom right to see who you're who you are any given time. Okay. These torn papers could be someone trying to destroy evidence. Okay. Could be our victim's watch. Okay. Looks like we need to find the other pieces before we can put it back together again. Hopefully there's something that could tell us more about our victim. Seems like we still need to find more. Okay. Let's go to the laptop. There must be some sort of instructions or code for completing this. We should find it so we can unlock Kate's computer. Okay, Kate is her name. Okay. She was undressed after she died. If I could put it on back the way it was, maybe I could understand why the unsub took the time to undress her in the first place. Hope you guys took plenty of photos before I start tampering with the scene. <laughs> These aren't bloody smears, they're oil-based, like paint, so the victim must be an artist. With no sign of force entry, her killer could have been someone she knew, like a jilted patron. Okay. Watch. Just like in Louisiana cases, robbery wasn't a motive in this murder. The victim's watch appears to be quite expensive. Okay, that's all we have for now. See our task. Background check landlord at police station. Find and put together the scraps and find the missing items so we can start the crime scene. Okay, so I put the custom cursor back on because with the um, standard cursor, things wouldn't change shape. So now I can easily see, without having to look for these teeny tiny sparkles, <laughs> what I need to look at. Okay, there it is. See, I didn't see that because of the cursor was different. Okay, now we can leave. Oh, this is what's called casual mode. Okay. So in, in expert mode, you, won't, you wouldn't see any sparkles or anything else. So I'm just kind of thinking, you know, to keep things moving along in <laughs> during these playthroughs, let's have it to where people sparkle. <laughs> There we go. Speech bell. Take this car downtown to the police station. After you interrogate the landlord, you can finish it here at the crime scene. Thanks, Agent Morgan. You can also do the hidden object scene. Our initially hidden from view needs to be uncovered to be found. We are sifting through the trash! Okay. There's a pipe. There we go. There's her shirt. What do we look for? Briefcase. Let's see. There's a hook. There's a soccer ball all the way up in the corner. Let's 
question mark. Where's the egg beater? You know, I've always just used a whisk whenever I'm beating eggs. I didn't see an actual egg beater until I was in high school in a home ec class. Okay, we got another piece of paper. Until a home ec class. And then I was just so confused. Because <laughs> it takes about the same amount of time to use an egg beater as it does to use a whisk. Or even just use a fork. Another piece of the paper. We have two more torn pieces of paper in the scene, and now we just have one more torn piece of the paper. Okay, it's the last piece of torn paper, at least in this scene. I don't think that note was that big. Okay. Diskette. Okay, they're calling it a diskette. I know it as a floppy disk. <laughs> There's a tin cup. I can barely see that with the gray. The tin cup was a natural tin color, and then the background is gray. Now all we have left is the statuette. Which is that? Okay. Found a shirt and torn papers. Okay. Actually, I'm. Oh, torn paper. Torn papers. Something the most telling. Sometimes the most telling details about a crime scene. Or what was thrown away and who did the throwing. Actually, I can go back inside. I can put a shirt on her. Her shirt was removed after she was stabbed. Why would her unsub undress her when sex was clearly not a motive? Look like torn scraps of paper. Is this a discarded note that might lead us to the, to the unsub? Okay, put these together. Oh. Is that where to rotate? There's someone up by your left click. Okay, double click or right click. There we go. Sign with a J and a smiley face. Kate. K. Sparkles. A code. It was like some sort of code or password. Ooh, well, we can use a code. There we go. <clears throat> okay, remember number of continents red. Ah, uh, <laughs> we have to do some coloring. Number of baseball innings green. Number of spider legs blue. Number of decagon, decagon sides, orange. Number of Olympic greens, purple. Number of zodiac signs, yellow. Don't keep this near your computer. Smiley face with J. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> see. Number of spider legs. Eight. Okay. Okay, so you have to color all of the eights. Obviously, I'm doing the ones I know f first and foremost. Okay, that's the only one I didn't know was the number of baseball innings. I was just like, I'm going to do that one last. Bam. 
fruit. Welcome back, Kate. Okay. Could be that she was typing this just before she was murdered. Looks like she just come back from something called Art on the Square and left her purse there. Kate. Hi, remember that letter I showed you? I lost it with my purse at the art party last night. Do you? Okay. So. The moments before a murder are crucial. We should print this out and check out art on the square. Maybe we'll find that purse. Okay. Go. Flyer. Find art on the square party. Okay, so... Go back. We go to the police station. Cause we still need to interrogate the landlord. But we will do that in the next episode. This is really engaging and really fun, so I'm definitely going to get back to this. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye.